Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start our discussion with uh, the mechanism of breathing. So what happens when we breathe? Now as I mentioned before also that breathing is a physical process. So it has no enzymes involved, no chemical reactions involved. So it is, it is not a chemical process at all. It is just the process of taking in air and giving out air. Just that. So we will see how that process takes place. Now breathing involves two processes. One is taking in air which is known as inhalation. And the other one is giving out air which is called exhalation. In means something taken in and ex means outside. So something thrown outside that is exhalation. So inhalation means taking in good air. What do we mean by good air? Good is nothing but air rich in oxygen. Why the air rich in oxygen is considered as good air? Because oxygen is something which is a desired, which is desired by the body. Because each and every cell of the body needs oxygen. So air which is rich in oxygen is considered as good air. Similarly, it says that exhalation means releasing out foul air. What is foul air? What kind of air are we calling as the bad air or the foul air? The air which is rich in carbon dioxide. Why so? Is carbon dioxide always bad? Not like that. It is just that oxygen is something which is required by the cells. So they think anything rich in oxygen is good. But carbon dioxide is something which is not really required by the cells. It is produced as a, a byproduct which they don't need. So when they don't need it, I mean, anything which is rich in it is not good. So that is foul air. So this carbon dioxide is released out in the process of exhalation. However, this carbon dioxide is utilized by the plants for the process of photosynthesis. So that is how the carbon dioxide which we exhale get utilized in the atmosphere because the plants take in this carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is taken in by the plants for the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so that is a different story altogether. So here we are going to talk about these two processes that is inhalation and exhalation. That is what happens to the various respiratory organs during these processes. So first let us talk about inhalation. That is we are going to take in oxygen rich air. So during inhalation, what, what happens? We are going to take in air, so we need more space inside the lungs to accommodate the air which we take in. So for that, what has to happen? The diaphragm needs to go down. As I mentioned before also, this is the shape of our diaphragm, dome shaped. So if I want this to go down, I actually want the diaphragm to contract. And when I want it to expand, I actually want it to go up. So this is how it is when it expands and this is how it is when it contracts. Now when we want more space for the lungs, we want the diaphragm muscles to contract. Now when the diaphragm muscles contract, this dome shaped structure, it actually goes down. And when it goes down, lungs get, get a lot of space. Therefore the lungs expand. Now what happens when the lungs expand? Now as I said, the muscles contract, the diaphragm is pulled down. As a result, the thoracic cavity expands, the entire space here because diaphragm denotes the end of the thoracic cavity. So when the diaphragm itself has gone down, so the thoracic cavity volume has increased. In that case, the lungs also expand because they get a lot of free space, so the lungs will expand. Now what happens when the lungs expand? When the lungs expand, their volume increases. Now we know that PV is a constant, that is pressure into volume is constant. That is what we know by our from our basic knowledge. Now when volume increases, what will happen to the pressure? When volume increases, pressure would decrease because pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Therefore, when the lungs expand, the volume inside the lungs increases. Therefore, the pressure inside the lungs would decrease. So that is what happens, that the air pressure inside the lungs will decrease. Right? So now what happens that the air pressure outside here in the atmosphere is more than the air pressure inside the lungs. 
so a pressure gradient is created now any movement like we all are aware of the concept of diffusion and all where uh, particles move along a concentration gradient that is they move from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration so similar is the case here here also the air moves from a region of higher pressure gradient towards a region of lower pressure gradient so in this case what happens due to the movement of this or due to the contraction of the diaphragm the pressure inside the lungs decreases so what happens pressure outside outside in the sense pressure in the atmosphere is more in the atmosphere is greater than the pressure inside the lungs therefore a pressure gradient is created a gradient is created so now air will move from region of higher pressure towards region of lower pressure so air will move from atmosphere towards the lungs so it will move towards the lungs and that is how inhalation happened so here if you see when you take in air so that and as a result what happens when you try to take in air your lungs expand so that it can accommodate the air which you have taken in when you have taken in sufficient air the diaphragm contract the diaphragm expands again that is the diaphragm is pulled up now when the diaphragm is pulled the opposite process happens in case of exhalation we will talk about exhalation in the next slide first understand inhalation once inhalation is clear exhalation also you will understand so here you can see that is why if if in, in fact you can try it out yourself you breathe in you breathe out you can actually feel that uh, the the chest portion of your body it expands and contracts and that movement happens due to the muscular movement of the diaphragm which in turn causes a change in the volume of the thoracic cavity and that change in volume causes a change in pressure this results in a gradient and therefore the air moves from a region of higher pressure towards a region of lower pressure so on a very similar concept we will also try to understand the process of exhalation so on similar lines let us look at the process of exhalation what happens when we give out air which is rich in carbon dioxide so what happens during giving out air just the opposite now the diaphragm muscles will expand and expansion of the diaphragm muscles would mean that the diaphragm would come up somewhat like this so the diaphragm is pulled up therefore the volume of the thoracic cavity will decrease so it will contract now when the thoracic cavity contracts what will happen to the lungs the lungs will also not get a lot of space so the lungs volume will also decrease that is the lungs will also contract now what will happen the volume would decrease now again as we know pressure is inversely proportional to volume so when volume decreases pressure would increase now when the pressure increases that means the air pressure inside the lungs is more than the air pressure in the atmosphere therefore air pressure inside lungs is greater than the air pressure in atmosphere correct so therefore the movement of air will take place from higher pressure area to lower pressure area that is the movement of air will take place from the lung to the atmosphere so just the opposite way so this is how the movement of air will take place so here also you can observe the similar pattern so this is how the process of breathing takes place and this physical process is known as breathing taking in air and giving out air and during this if you see here in this entire process it is it is all about physical movements the movement of the uh, muscles of the diaphragm the move the increase in volume of the thoracic cavity and the lungs so there were no chemical reactions involved no enzymes involved therefore it is a physical process and this is how the the process of inspiration and expiration actually take place so now the question is when we say inhalation we take in oxygen from the air so that is understood but when we talk about exhalation we are actually giving out air which is rich in carbon dioxide so from where are we getting the carbon dioxide so please understand the carbon dioxide is getting produced as a result of cellular respiration 
correct so as a result of cellular respiration carbon dioxide is produced so it is produced in the cells right so from the cells or from the tissues it is passed on to the blood and then the blood vessels like the blood capillaries will carry them and they will pass it on to the alveoli because they are the sites of exchange you remember between alveoli and the blood vessels oxygen will come out from alveoli carbon dioxide will get into alveoli so once the carbon dioxide come into the alveoli it actually reached the lungs so once it reached alveoli means it is here so the carbon dioxide has actually reached here so once it is in the lungs so from lungs it will be exhaled now it has been observed that on an average an adult healthy human being breathes 12 to 16 times per minute so that means 12 to 16 times we actually inhale and exhale so this is how the entire process of breathing is governed thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.